The Life and Death of Gabriel Fernandez. The Netflix community was left in tears when a true crime documentary directed by Brian Knappenberger exploring the devastating murder of eight-year-old Gabriel Fernandez was released. Gabriel Fernandez, born on 21st February 2005 in Los Angeles, California, United States, to Arnold Contreras and Pearl Fernandez, was a sweet eight-year-old child that wanted to be useful and sought the love of his family. But unfortunately, poor Gabriel couldn't get the parental care and love he deserves as his father, Arnold Contreras, was in prison at the time. Gabriel was living with the uncle, a seemingly happy and healthy child, until 2012 when Gabriel's well-being took a radical turn as Pearl Fernandez reportedly welcomed him to obtain welfare benefits despite his family's concern that she was negligent with her other children. After joining his mother and Aguirre, Gabriel arrived at a new school. Shortly after starting there, her teacher, Jennifer Garcia, felt that things were not right at home. In an interview, Garcia, who appears throughout the six-part series, says that a couple of weeks after he started in her classroom, Gabriel asked, is it normal for mothers to beat their children? When she pressed further, Gabriel asked if it was normal to be hit with a belt buckle. Is it normal for you to bleed? He asked, according to Garcia. Feeling strange, Garcia immediately reported the exchange to the Los Angeles County Child Abuse Hotline and the case ended up with a social worker, Stephanie Rodriguez. According to the documentary, Rodriguez never adequately made the inquiries needed to determine the condition of Gabriel's home life. And as the school year went on, the abuse Gabriel endured worsened. He began coming to class with patches of hair missing, scabs on his scalp, injured lips from being punched in the face and bruises all over his face after his mother shot him with a BB gun. According to the grand jury testimony obtained by the Los Angeles Times, Gabriel's siblings said he was forced to eat cat litter and was kept locked in the cabinet in his mother's room. They said Fernandez and Aguirre called him gay and punished him for exhibiting feminine qualities like playing with dolls. After Pearl Fernandez called 911 on May 22, 2013 to report that Gabriel was not breathing, the paramedics who responded found him with broken ribs a cracked skull, and BB pellets stuck in his body. Gabriel was taken to the hospital and later declared brain dead. He died on May 24, 2013. The judicial case was carried out in the Superior Court of Los Angeles County against the mother of the child, Pearl Fernandez, his stepfather, Isaro Aguirre, and four employees of the Department of Child and Family Services, DCFS. Stephanie Rodriguez, Tricia Clement, Kevin Boom, and Gregory Merritt. The case sparked a debate about the effectiveness of the child protection system in California as the social workers were charged for falsification of public documents to try to erase the responsibility and the negligence that led to the death of Gabriel. The stepfather, Isaro Aguirre, was sentenced to death while the mother, Pearl Fernandez, received life imprisonment in the separate trials they had in 2017. So what do you think? Could the Department of Child and Family Services, DCFS, do more to protect poor Gabriel? And what should have been the fate of Pearl Fernandez other than life imprisonment? Let's hear your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoy this video, give it a like, share and subscribe for more interesting videos from Brilliance.